This news program is proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods and Paradise Beverages. Engao Cancer Unit gets new machines. NCD Governor condemns killing. And East New Britain shows unity against gender-based violence. This is National MTV News with Godwin Eki. Good evening. Thanks for joining us for Friday's news. The Engao Hospital Unit has a new CT scan and mammography machine that will help in diagnosing cancer patients, treatment and surgery. The machines were given by the National Fisheries Authority. Fisheries Minister Patrick Bassa says it's the authority's social obligation to assist hospitals. Yesterday, the cancer unit at Engao launched their new CT scan and digital mammography machine. These machines will help with early detection of cancer, according to Engao CEO, Dr. Christopher Kenny Hertz. They'll help, they'll help Engao and the patients in, in Ley, in Morobi, in any number of ways, in diagnostic, in treatment, in regular care, in surgery, in intensive care, in pediatrics, you name it. These, these machines were given by the National Fisheries Authority under their corporate social responsibility. The assistance that NFA provides for health centers or health services in PNG as part of its corporate social, social obligations. One is to procurement of major medical equipment that are essential in our referral hospitals, such as one we have here. now. This here. cancer unit is the only cancer treatment center in the country and gets referrals nationwide. 30 million kina was allocated by the national government. So far, 11 million kina has been received according to Dr. Kenny Hertz. Dr. Kenny Hertz says the best way to treat cancer in the country is through early detection. The CT scan and mammography machine for breast scans will help with this. Early detection, prevention, diagnosis, surgical treatment, those are the keys that we should be focusing on. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, Lee. Koki Market in Port Mosby was in chaos this morning when people from the Wanigela settlement retaliated after one of them was cut with a knife by a man from Goilala at the Koki Buoy Market. According to an eyewitness, the incident occurred when a beetle nut seller from Wanigela argued with the security guard from Goilala. In anger, the guard cut the man's leg and that aroused a fight that lasted for an hour. The road was blocked and the police fired shots in an attempt to stop the fight. Dead man was taken to Port Mosby General Hospital and the perpetrator is now at Boroko Police Station. The Koki Boy Market was closed today after the incident. The barbaric killing of Grace Gavira has been condemned by NCD Governor Poes Pakop. This week, Governor Pakop, together with Family Sexual Violence Action Committee, made a call for all men to be responsible in their actions and to treat women as equal partners. Anger and our shame. In a media conference, NCD Governor Poes Pakop and members of the NGOs and Family and Sexual Violence Action Committee expressed their frustrations and sadness following the murder of the 26-year-old Grace Gavera. This incident happened on the final days of 16 days of activism, calling for end to violence against women and girls. And according to Governor Pakup, this was a sad indictment for the country. Governor Pakup described the killing as inhuman and unacceptable. As governor of our capital city, I uh, joined everyone here and I'm sure all our people to collectively express our disgust and condemnation of this behavior. 
president of PNG Counselors Association, Susan Sete, shared similar sentiments condemning the murder in the strongest terms. I condemn that on behalf of the women of Papua New Guinea, where the killing is happening everywhere, especially when it happened on the day internationally it was declared to observe to eliminate violence against women. Governor Pagup has given assurance that the perpetrator will be prosecuted and convicted. He will be meeting with the ACP and the Metropolitan Superintendent to work on plans on how NCDC can help police to end the impunity of violence in the city. To look at ways in which uh, NCDC can also help the police to build up the capacity to find ways in which we can you know, stamp out and especially arrest the perpetrators of violence at its lowest form and in extreme form. Amanda Rimur, National MTV News. Matilda Pila Kapio, a human rights advocate and member of Papua Hahine Social Action Forum and activist group advocating strongly against gender-based violence has strongly condemned the recent Imecha killing of Grace Gavire. She also highlighted that the brutal killing took place within the 20 days of activism on gender-based violence. Ms. Pila Capio is urging politicians to legislate tougher actions to deal with such brutal matters. Therefore, I demand and advocate in the most strongest terms the violent and cruel partner perpetrator be given a full life year sentence with no parole. Let this be a strong statement lesson to other future potential perpetrators out in the community. A legal challenge and precedent must now be set in all future serious cases. Talking is over, we need action. And I call on the politicians again to step in through tougher legislation for such inhumane, brutal, br brutal perpetrators. I call on the government to set up a human rights commission as soon as possible. It's long overdue and delayed. The rights of human beings must be protected, women, girls, and children in particular. I say again, enough is enough. Members of the East New Britain Provincial Government today took to the streets of Kokopo to commemorate the 20 days of activism. The main message was putting an end to gender-based violence. Dr. Alois Dutton from the Internal Revenue Commission took, took the lead in the march today that seeks to promote a cultural shift in the status of men and women in Papua New Guinea. And domestic violence at the, in the world of work. So it's basically around where people are working and trying to campaign for ending gender-based violence in the workplace, you know, both in the public service and in the private sector. And to do that, we need to change our mindsets. Uh. Like I said earlier, our cultures and our traditions don't allow us uh, to be in that position. Uh. Uh, we need to strike a balance between our traditional cultures, uh, the Western influence, and what we see the role of women in our country. Uh. Segib Salika is now the new Chief Justice of Papua New Guinea. He was sworn in at the government house yesterday by the Governor General Grand Chief Sir Bob Dadai. The new Chief Justice was appointed this month. He takes over from Sir Salamo Injia. Segib Salika hails from Western Province and was born in August of 1955. He was admitted to the bar in 1979 and went on to work with the Office of the Public Prosecutor. In 1988, Sir Gibbs was appointed magistrate and two years later appointed a judge of the National and Supreme Courts. He is married with five children. Sir Gibbs will be serving as Chief Justice for a term of 10 years. His ceremonial seating will be on the 14th of January 2019. And National MTV News continues after break. Stay with us. Favorite biscuit, the best of all. And now, the FG 
the mining and petroleum industry trains teachers and builds classrooms. We invest millions of kina to run medical centers and health programs. We build roads and bridges to connect communities to essential services. And we help fight tropical diseases and supply clean drinking water to keep PNG healthy. Mining and Petroleum, growing PNG's future. Brought to you by the PNG Chamber of Mines and Petroleum. In our harsh and vibrant landscape, Dulux Weather Shield is the perfect choice to protect your building against everything Mother Nature throws at it. Worth doing, worth Dulux. Welcome back to National MTV News. The Morabe Provincial Government today launched its Kundu Vision 2048 Plan and Strategic Program Implementation Plan 2018 to 2022. Morabe Kundu Vision 2048 to Plan rather is a 30-year plan that replaces the five-year provincial development plan. The two, the two plans are aligned to the National Government's Vision 2050 and the Millennium Term Development Plan 3. These were the two plans launched today in Lay, the five-year strategic program implementation plan 2018 to 2022 and Morbe Kundu Vision 2048. Morbe's Kundu Vision 2048 is a 30-year strategic plan that replaces the usual provincial five-year development plan. The governor for Morbe, Ginsen Saunu, says the Kundu Vision plan was established to bring changes to Morbe. The province is not going to be here for five years. It will be here. Only the leaders and election and governments will come and go. But for the people of Morbe, for the future, there must be a long-term plan. Over the last 40 years, numerous development goals, strategies and projects were made to deliver basic services to the nine districts of Morbe to improve people's livelihoods. The plans are done throughout the provincial government's political and administrative leadership. Most of these basic services haven't reached the people of Morbe since 1978 until today. Our country and province, the resources are always short. But it's good to have a long-term plan and start now. So bit by bit, every year, five years, ten years, then you, over the period of time, I think we can able to see some changes actually taking place in a big way. Uh, but if we follow the political way of doing it, it five-year plan is a political development plan. Thirty-year is future generation plan. Morbis Provincial Administrator Barty Pambonch who was also present during the launching, said 
there should be a systematic approach to implement the programs of the plants. Mr. Ipambons said having a baseline data is most critical for Morbe. This will help in the planning of the budget to put money where development is needed. The first thing I will put in place uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the development plan that we just launched is a database. And I've just uh, uh, been talking to the uh, University and University of Technology uh, uh, doctors that uh, we will involve them to help us to uh, do that uh, baseline data for the province. Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lay. 41 schools in Medang province have completed their School Improvement Learning Program or SLEEP. The program aims to empower communities and schools to become independent and innovative by using available resources through the SLEEP. SLEEP will assist both teachers, parents and the community to contribute to child-friendly schools. The Together for Education project under World Vision Medding area worked with 50 schools in Usinobundi, Middle Ramu and Raikos districts of Medding province. However, only 41 schools completed their sleep plans and have them approved and signed by the Provincial Education Director Moses Sariki yesterday. Uh, yes. So just to give you a rundown of the sleep inside the Usinobundi district, out of the 27 schools in Miwok on time, we have 26 lips ready here for approval. Uh, not this time. Uh, for for Miro Ramu, out of the 17 schools, Mipla got 11 plus lips completed uh, by 11, 11 schools in uh, Miro Ramu district. Uh, for all schools in Miwok Quantum Law Solibe area, and uh, out of the six, you may got four plus leaves planned to all stop here. So. The Together for Education project is aimed at enhancing access to quality elementary education for girls and boys with a special focus on literacy and numeracy uh, skills. The program is supported by the Australian government in partnership right, with the PNG government through PNG Partnership Fund. Program uh, through the uh, partnership fund uh, with the Australian government and the uh, uh, Guni, all funding this project. Now, in the work on them, uh, 50 plus schools inside Long Medang Province. Medang Provincial Education Director Moses Sariki says the SLEEP program is a very vital tool needed in schools. However, for now, only the elementary schools have SLEEP plans and not the primary, secondary and vocational schools. Adding the challenge is now on schools to implement and sustain the plans for the next three years. This law, 41 plans now, we plan by signing. Amy, B plus something, lower schools, lower lower or elementary schools as well. Primary no good, high schools low here no good, now vocation center low here no good. So this lay me angama piet, low me plan low look look. Meanwhile, TFF coordinator believes without sleep plans, most schools are likely to misuse funds. So sleep and what blood tool? You teacher, you must got tool. Tool blow walk. No, you see money blow, spend him law, school money, you see law, classroom. Masaluis, National MTV News, Medang. Students attending Pangia Secondary School in the Southern Highlands will be able to enroll at the Western Pacific University by 2020. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill confirmed this when attending the school's graduation ceremony. He said the Chinese government has promised 50 million kina to the university for students at Pangia Secondary to be enrolled by 2020. Mr O'Neill added that the PNG government has also allocated another 50 million kina to counterfund the infrastructure work at the secondary school. The Prime Minister also announced that the Yalebu Pangia district administration plans to introduce digital education for those who cannot make it into grade 12 and other colleges so they can also study at home using the internet. He encouraged the students to always put their education first and promised a laptop each of the top scoring students next year. A New Zealand timber company will be taking in six graduates from the Lay Timber and Forestry Training College as part of a partnership arrangement. 
The former students will begin working at a company in Gisborne on New Zealand's North Island. The announcement was made at the graduation ceremony yesterday. Thirty-two students graduated from the Timber Training College yesterday after a year of training. Six of the top students have been selected to work in New Zealand next year. The college's principal, Vagilovo, says the selected six will work at the Roadkill Forestry Growth Management Company in New Zealand. Uh, there's never been any time in any TFTC graduation where uh, companies abroad have come to assist Timber College. The Timber and Forestry Training College has been operating for 39 years. Over the years, companies have employed graduates from this college because it remains the leading forestry training college in the country. Mr. Lovo said, despite the employment struggles faced today, he believes that this lot of graduates will be employed in the future. Uh, we are very uh, optimistic about uh, college students, TFTC students, finding employment after they leave the place. Mary Boyonigani, National MTV News, Lee. The online release of the national examinations result for grades 10 and 12 were announced yesterday in Port Moresby by the Minister for Education, Nick Kuman. The results can now be accessed on this website. Given name? Once having access to the web page, grade 10 and 12 students can either log into grade 10 results if they are in grade 10 or grade 12 results if they are in grade 12. The students can then enter their surname and given name. The password will be the year, school code, province code and candidate number. 603, what's the number? 1113. 1113. Yep. Distinction, distinction, distinction. Pyramid Solutions is a technological company in Port Mosby. This was the company that built the website for the education department. The website is easy to access. Pyramid Chief Technological Officer Rajesh Yaramasu says there will be no security breach because the system will be highly monitored. With complete firewall and necessary disaster management, so all the logins and all the activities that are happening internal to the portal, let that be login, let that be result retrieving, let that be print, saving, everything, every small thing is getting tracked and recorded along with the IP address and the timestamp. Yarmasu also showed MTV the actual process in logging in. Yes. A total of 72,012 grade 10 students in 328 high and secondary schools and 30,662 grade 12 students in 170 secondary and national high schools will now have access to their final examination results. Minister for Education Nikuman says the national exams were completed without any major incidents or malpractices. But uh, I'm glad that we've completed uh, uh, our main task is to deliver education to our young people in this country to the 2.1 million students we have done that successfully in 2018 so put your hands together for all the hard work in the headmasters and principals right for Papua New Guinea Michelle Stephen National MTV News Minister for Education Nikuman says the parliament seat for Gumini Open Electorate belongs to him and not Lucas Dekena. Disputes in the 2017 general elections had both Dekena and Kuman at the swearing-in of members in parliament in August last year. Since then, the matter has been in court until the ruling last Friday. Court concluded on, uh, on Friday. Clear to the country that I won the election from day one. I would have been declared on the 26th of July at about 6.30. And uh, the process that has been employed by the retained officers and the county officers, including the Provincial Election Steering Committee and the police officers, that they, they know who they are, should now be further investigated by the Electoral Commission. 
The organization that performs vital roles in promoting business investment into and within the country has launched four publication documents. The Investment Promotion Authority launched the 2018 to 2020 Strategic Plan, the Annual Report, Business License Information System, and the Guide to Import and Export Procedures, Suli Suli reports. As a team effort in maintaining good corporate governance for transparency and accountability, the four components of IPA's publication officially presented today highlights some of its achievements, plans and challenges. According to Chairman Leon Baskins, IPA's 2017 annual report obtained has been one of milestone achievements. There's a requirement under Section 18 of the Investment Promotion Act 1992. We are happy to, to again have, as I said earlier, have another clean financial record. This is for three cons consecutive years now. He said the 2018 to 2020 strategic plan is the third plan that concentrates on having better work environment in accordance with the government's development plan. The plan also focuses on staff welfare policy. The current strategic plan covers the period from 2018 to 2022 we focus on improving the operating environment with agencies and line departments to facilitate mandated legislation. IPA's Acting Director for Investors Servicing Promotion Division, Darrow Peters, says the business license information system is a key component publication for investors doing business in the country. Whilst the export and import guides document is for the small to medium enterprises. Sectoral uh, requirements in terms of what are the licenses in those sectors uh, that you would uh, require after you register with the IPA, uh, those information are contained in there. Former Managing Director of IPA Ivan Pomaliu congratulated the management team on their vibrant leadership and IPA for being one of the best organizations in the country through its performance in the business sector. Governance practices against what we've been able to do and what I've certainly been part of for, uh, at the IPA gives you a perspective on how far IPA is and I've got to say this, you are actually miles ahead of uh, a lot of organizations. Whilst IPA has not received budgetary support from the government for three consecutive years, the chairman urged the staff not to be distracted by this, but rather be innovative and continue to deliver its services to the people. Suli Suli, National MTV News. You're watching National MTV News. When we come back, Neville Choi brings us the Week in Review. Don't go away. You too can now experience the refreshment of pure PNG with Tru Tru Wara. Sourced from an ancient aquifer, carbon filtered, ultraviolet and ozone treated, and the finest purification with reverse osmosis. And that means the science lesson is now over. Settle back and refresh yourself with PNG's finest. Reach for a chill through through water. Pure PNG. Do you know your status? Yes, I do. Do you know your status? Yes, sir. Do you know your status? Yes. Do you know your status? No. Don't know your status? Get tested. Know your status and get treated. PNG. Together we are stronger than HIV AIDS. This message was authorized by the Director of the National AIDS Council and brought to you by the National AIDS Council Secretariat. They continue to invade our homes, disrupt our livelihoods and threaten our health. But we can stop this cycle of destruction. Reach for Morty's fast knockdown multi-insect killer. Our trusted technology knocks down and kills flying and crawling insects fast. Trusted technology that kills fast. And at night, you can rely on Morty's calls to repel mosquitoes and protect your family. Choose Morty for trusted family protection. More smart, more safe, Morty.
Welcome back to National MTV News. It has become one of the biggest topics of discussion this week, again drawing attention to the widespread abuse and killing of women by their parents. The murder of 26-year-old Port Mosby woman, Grace Gavera, has sparked renewed debate on how PNG should address this lingering problem. In this week in review, we feature the story of Grace Gavera, who was brutally murdered on Saturday by her boyfriend. The message here, she should not become another forgotten statistic. Apart from her family, friends, workmates and neighbors, not many people knew who Grace Gavera was until this week. For those who have not been on social media, this is the picture that shocked many people. We have had to blur this picture because this platform doesn't allow the use of gruesome images like this. But let me tell you what it shows. It's the picture of a Papua New Guinean woman, stripped, humiliated and tortured before she was killed. There's blood all over her body and she died a horrible, painful death. On Saturday evening, her father spent the early part of the night at her residence at Erema. They chatted for a while, then he went home. In the morning, they told him his daughter was dead, killed by her abusive boyfriend. I was at Gaba Gaba, and then around the chain the morning, I received a phone call from a family member telling me that she is in the hospital dead, just like they're telling me like that. I was shocked, I couldn't believe it. Because on Saturday, I was with her in the house, talking with her, chatting. Around one o'clock, I left and went to the village. And then when hearing the story the next morning that she was dead, I couldn't believe it. Why was she killed? We don't know. But why should any Papua New Guinean woman be killed? And why should there even be any attempt to justify the killing of any woman by an abusive boyfriend or partner or husband? Health Minister Dr. Pukatemu has come out to condemn the killing. As a national leader and particularly from the central province, I am gravely concerned about this um, barbaric and gruesome act by an individual, particularly a husband. And um, I know that all of us in this world and in families, we have our disagreements with our partners. But to go to the extent of uh, taking the life of a uh, a partner, so we, I condemn it in the largest extent that this act is uh, barbaric, it's gruesome, it's inhuman. Governors of NCD, Power Sparkop, and Central Province, Robert Agarobe, have both issued similar statements. But you know what? Every killing of PNG women at the hands of abusive partners should be condemned in the same manner. This forum should be bigger. We deliver a better growth outcome which will lift heavy incomes. It should be discussed in our all-male parliament with the same passion and determination as DSIP funding, corruption and expensive sports cars. Grace Gavera isn't just another statistic added to the long list of victims of women killed by their partners. Yesterday, we learned that Grace died at the age of 26. She was an administrative clerk at the National Department of Education. She was raised by her grandparents and then by her aunt and uncle. That's right, she's not just a statistic. She was a real person. At least two days after the killing, the alleged murderer was caught by police in Port Moresby. He is now in custody. These pictures were taken and shared on social media by members of the RPNGC. Yesterday, we asked Grace Gavera's father if he was going to call for the death penalty. He said no. He doesn't want the burden of another person's death placed on him. 
but he wants the suspect to face the full force of the law. He also said there will be no compensation for the death of his daughter. All he wants is for justice to be served. Neville Choi, National MTV News. PNG is often labelled as potentially the worst place in the world for gender-based violence where men are always labelled as perpetrators of violence, but no one has asked why. The hashtag men and boys to workshop held in Port Mosby brought together men and boys to discuss how violence affects them and to find answers. A wide range of men from all walks of life attended the Men and Boys 2 workshop in Port Moresby to define violence in the PNG context, but more importantly to answer the question, do men in PNG experience sexual and domestic violence too? The genesis of the Men and Boys 2 conversation emerged when 20-year-old human rights activist from Papua New Guinea, David Lawrence, raised the alarm during a United Nations convention in Samoa that men's issues are always brushed aside, where PNG men are always labelled as perpetrators of violence. So the workshop covers um, a dialogue between men and young men about the types of violence that's been experienced, um, getting to understand the context of how people understand what violence is, and also understanding that men also get to experience violence. Very often we um, quickly conclude saying that men are always perpetrators of violence, but never understand that men are also affected by violence. The only high school student who attended the workshop, Philip Anive of Jubilee Catholic Secondary School, said workshops like this are important and young people should be more involved in initiatives to eradicate socio-economic issues in Papua New Guinea. For my instance, growing up in violence, I got tired of it. I just wanted to like Stop it. Me playing up now. We're tired of it. It's either we help our parents or we just stand by, sit by and just keep on looking at it going. The status reports growing, growing, growing. When is it going to end? Probably the kids should be part of it now with the youths. Maybe we have the answer to it. While women are said to be more affected by gender-based violence, men are also prone to abuse and violence. The Men and Boys 2 workshop created dialogues between men and women to identify different forms of violence and to understand how violence affects both women and men. Isaiah Tare, National MTV News. There was a blazing fire this afternoon at Sun Engineering Limited along Napa Napa Road, some meters away from the Motukea Wharf. Thick smoke was seen increasing through the industrial area and as far as downtown Port Mosby. It is now not known what caused the fire, but word on social media is that it was caused by waste oil and the scorching Port Mosby heat. Workers from Sun Engineering and the firemen managed to stop the fire when MTV arrived at the scene. Fortunately, there were no casualties and no serious damage to the buildings. Hunters producing results in Rugby League will bring you that story in Trukai Sports after the break. Girl Nuggets cheese, chicken and cheese and onion all just got bigger, a lot bigger, 40% bigger. Look for the new Big Plus 35 gram packs. Bigger packs, better value at the same low price. That's right, 40% more gold nuggets in every pack for you to enjoy. Lady Speedstick presents Barbara Blade in the heat of the city. More action and adventure. She's always protected and fresh and uses Lady Speedstick that controls wetness and odor for effective protection that lasts up to 24 hours. She's always fresh, ready for anything and anyone. The new Lady Speedstick, fresh, strong, confident. In our harsh and vibrant landscape, Dulux Weather Shield is the perfect choice to protect your building against everything Mother Nature throws at it. Worth doing, worth Dulux.
For nearly three decades, the Asia-Pacific Economic Corporation Forum has been promoting free trade and development in the Asia-Pacific region. Through APEC, economic output in the Asia-Pacific has more than doubled, helping businesses' growth and employment. Through APEC, we are strengthening our economy, particularly in areas such as small businesses, tourism, agriculture, and information technology. We will continue to grow our economy and create more jobs as we host APEC in 2018. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. The Hunters program has been a pathway for players to move on to overseas contracts, but the Hunters are left with rebuilding their team every year. Moving forward, PNG RFL is looking to extend player contracts to keep key players in the Hunters in the future. Keeping together a strong team for the Hunters going into the 2019 season is not going to be an easy feat. Notable players like the Boas brothers, Asse and Watson, one of the best halves pairing in the past two years of the competition, are missing. Workhorse forwards, Redley Brower and Nixon Put, stalwarts in the Hunters' defence and attack, are just a few on a list of players leaving the team in the 2019 season. The PNG RFL board is happy though that the players are moving on with contracts overseas but admit to having a tough task rebuilding the team. That was one of the reasons for setting up the Hunters. Uh, while it, uh, you know, there, there are concerns that it depletes the team uh, because uh, you know, we have to rebuild every year. But uh, that's the challenge back to the PNG RFL to uh, sort of invest back in our Pathways program so that by the time these boys come up to the Hunters program, they're already ready. The Hunters players coming into the team in the last five seasons have only been on one-year contracts, which sees them open to opportunities overseas after just a season with the Hunters. But that is one of the pathway of the Hunters program, to have players have the opportunity to play in the team and move on to international competitions. Yes, uh, initially when we started, uh, we, we, we've done one-year contracts uh, for, for the boys, but uh, uh, going forward, we, we're revaluing, uh, revaluating all our, our process. Uh, with our but SCP. sooner than later, there will be a review on player contracts and other administrative concerns faced by the Hunters in the past five seasons, which might see an extension of player contracts for key players in the team. As you know, probably our five-year strategic plan left last year. As part of the new strategic plan and uh, you know, review we're doing of our process and programs over the last few years, that's one of the issues we're looking at, whether to give, uh, you know, to retain some of our market players, give them two-year contracts, or whether to, you know, and also trying to get the players to mix work and school with playing professional football. So those are some of the reviews that are currently being undertaken. And as we go forward, we will make those known on the strategy going forward for the Hunters program. Fidel Sukina, National MTV Sports. And Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay tuned. Trukai Sports. Whatever our work may be, sing out strong as far as you can see. Whatever language people are taught, come on, everyone join in. An exciting adventure is about to begin. Cause there's one thing we all know, when it's time to get up and go. Sharing stories make the call, our favorite biscuit the best of Hello, name below me Lua Rikis. Time Pilai Netball one time PNG Peppers national team. May it lo practice lo come up good all get a time. Time Pilai Pinis, all get a good la passing lo wasim han one time soap me must make him. Before me kai kai, or behind lo golo toilet. Also, na all get a time, me did lo practice wasim han one time soap. Mining na petroleum is kulim ol tisa na building classroom blong ol sumatin. Mi pla iputin planti money inside long ol' health center na all health programs. Mi pla i building road na bridge long bring him service long ol' people. 
Na mipla ihalibim long rausim all kain kain sick. Na givim clean water blong drink long all PNG man merry by staff healthy. Mining na petroleum kama bim good pla behind time long Papua New Guinea. This pla tok tok ikam long PNG Chamber of Mines na petroleum. At IPI Catering, we understand the intricacies of the environments in which we work. Providing innovative, fresh and creative catering solutions, our experience and commitment is a winning combination. Delivering great food anywhere and anytime. IPI Catering, part of the IPI group of companies. I love the way you taste. I love the easy meals. I love family dinner time. I, I love, love my true guys. guys. I love the quality. I love the yummy smell. I love the energy and chef. I love my true guys. So many reasons, all of us agreeing. So put on your t-shirts and let's all sing. I love my true guys. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love, I love, I love my true guys. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. In an interview with MTV Sports, President of the International Powerlifting Federation, Robert Kerla, said future Oceania championships will see an increase in the number of Pacific Island countries participating. The inclusion will involve competitions and recognition for international referees, especially from the Pacific Island nations. The recent Oceania Powerlifting Championship in Gold Coast, Australia witnessed seven Pacific Island countries competing. These countries were PNG, Fiji, Niue, New Caledonia, Fiji, Solomon Islands and Nauru. President Robert Kerla was pleased to see an increase of Pacific Island countries at the event. In the past, um, you know, there's been very limited amount of countries uh, participating in the Oceania Championship. Uh, but now there's been a change in leadership. Uh, we have a new, federa uh, new regional federation now, um, and their leadership uh, has been more inclusive and to include all of the voices of the Pacific nations to be a part of the process, you know, demonstrating good governance, transparency, so, uh, as be whereas before that was not taking place. Kerala says IPF is pleased to say that it is now moving in the right direction, especially after recent administrative changes. He says IPF's plan is to work alongside island nations so that they too can have a representation at every international event. Of course, we're going to be getting ready. Uh, this, this event uh, here in Oceania will lead into the Pacific Games. Uh, this is one of the major um, IOC recognized uh, National Olympic uh, or Olympic Championships. Um, so we're, 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 this is very important to us, um, the, the International Powerlifting Federation. So we want to see the athletes participate in this event all up from all of the Pacific nations. So this is really important. So. To international boxing, whatever you make of the pre-fight, carry on. Tyson Fury's world heavyweight title bout with American, with American rather, Deontay Wilder will make one of the great sporting comebacks. Just a year ago, the Gypsy King was almost 180 kilos, dealing with depression, drug and alcohol issues. It's so hard to get to this point again. Not many people would ever believe that I could come back from 28 stone and mentally unwell to, to challenge him for the heavyweight championship of the world again in only 12 months. This is a miracle, I believe. Sunday's winner in line to fight fellow undefeated champion, Anthony Joshua. That ends Trukai Sports. The weather details when we come back. True Kai Sports. True Kai Sports.
Do you know your status? Yes, I do. Do you know your status? Yes, sir. Do you know your status? Yes. Do you know your status? No. Don't know your status? Get tested. Know your status and get treated. PNG. Together we are stronger than HIV AIDS. This message was authorized by the Director of the National AIDS Council and brought to you by the National AIDS Council Secretariat. continue to invade our homes, disrupt our livelihoods and threaten our health. But we can stop this cycle of destruction. Reach for Mortine's fast knockdown multi-insect killer. Our trusted technology knocks down and kills flying and crawling insects fast. Trusted technology that kills fast. And at night, you can rely on Mortine coils to repel mosquitoes and protect your family. Choose Mortine for trusted family protection. More smart, more safe, more For nearly three decades, the Asia-Pacific Economic Corporation Forum has been promoting free trade and development in the Asia-Pacific region. Through APEC, economic output in the Asia-Pacific has more than doubled, helping businesses' growth and employment. Through APEC, we are strengthening our economy, particularly in areas such as small businesses, tourism, agriculture, and information technology. We will continue to grow our economy and create more jobs as we host APEC in 2018. In our harsh and vibrant landscape, Dulux Weather Shield is the perfect choice to protect your building against everything Mother Nature throws at it. Worth doing, worth Dulux. The weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. And weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow, southern region, Port Moresby and Daru fine, though cloudy at times. Kerima, a shower or two, Alatau and Popondeta mostly fine. In the Mumase region, lay fine, though partly cloudy. Medeng, Wiwek and Vanimo, a shower or two. In the New Guinea Islands, Loringau, KV and Kokopo, Rabaul and Buka showers and possible thunderstorm, while Kimbe a shower or two. In the Highlands region, all centers few showers then morning fog. The weather details were proudly brought to you by Dulux, celebrating 50 years in PNG and the only paint made in PNG. And that's the way it is this Friday, the 30th of November 2018 from the news team, pleasant viewing, good night.
This news program was proudly brought to you by Paradise Foods and Paradise Beverages. It's bedtime.